Well, good evening. I hope that you've had a great day today. I want to encourage you to continue being a part of our 30-day Be the Good Challenge. I want you to be reading each of those verses each day as we go through the month of April and find ways that you can either see the good or be the good. I want to encourage you to continue to be a part of uh, this particular challenge through April. One of the things that I wanted to share this evening is the reading that we had for today from this 30-day challenge. Today's reading was from Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 6 through 11. And Deuteronomy chapter 7 deals with the chosen people of God. Now, God's chosen people, certainly as we think of them in the Old Testament, deals with the Israelites, those that come from the family and the lineage of Abraham, where God in Genesis chapter 12 called Abraham uh, and, and gave him that promise that through his seed all the nations of the earth would be blessed. Eventually, we make our way down to the children of Israel, and they find their, themselves in uh, slavery in Egypt. And Pharaoh finally lets the people go, and Moses is leading them out of Egyptian bondage, and they find their way in the wilderness. Well, it's during this time that we see Deuteronomy chapter 7 being written. This is the last month in the life of Moses as he is recording uh, kind of his last words to his family as he is seemingly on his deathbed. These are the things that are vitally important, the things that he wants them to remember. And so chapter 7 is very critical because he's letting them know and reminding them that indeed they are God's people. They are a chosen people. And so I want to read, not the entire reading, but verses 6 down through 9 from Deuteronomy chapter 7. And think about what's actually being said in this text. Verse 6, For you are a people holy to the Lord. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for his treasured possession out of all the peoples who are on the face of the earth. It was not because you were more in number than any other people that the Lord set his love on you and chose you, for you were the fewest of all peoples. But it is because the Lord loves you and is keeping the oath that he swore to your fathers, that the Lord has brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of slavery, from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know therefore that the Lord your God is God, the faithful God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments. That's verses 6 down through 9 of Deuteronomy chapter 7. Now, this text is so important because the people are making their way to the edge of the Jordan where now the promised land is just across the other side. But we know that Moses is not going to be able to enter in because of his disobedience, because he struck the rock when God told him to speak to the rock. And, and Moses is not going to be able to enter in, but he can see it. and God allows him to see it. And I'm convinced that it, it's during this time that Moses is writing Deuteronomy. And as they're able to look across and see the promised land, and while Moses is not able to go in with them, he can remind them of these important truths of who they are and of who God is. And I think that's something that we need to remember today, that we are the people of God, that we are his chosen people, that we are his treasured possession, and that God is our God. He is faithful now, I want you to think about some of these statements that are made. And there's a very similar passage that we find in 1 Peter chapter 2 that's similar to this. And we'll go there in just a moment. But I want you to think about this again. Verse 6, you are a people holy to the Lord your God. Now, what does it mean to be holy to the Lord your God? Well, being holy, this word really uh, comes from uh, a word that means to be set apart, uh, to be separated to be holy is to be consecrated or set apart for the Lord. You belong to Him. You're holy to the Lord your God. And then he says this, that the Lord has chosen you. He chose you. That's what Moses is telling the Israelites. And I believe that's the way we ought to think today. And we'll see that in just a moment. But that's what Moses is wanting the Israelites to understand that they are a people who are supposed to be set apart for the Lord. They belong to Him. God chose them. From all the peoples that were on the face of the earth, God chose them. 
And then he adds this little bit that, that they are chosen to be a, a people for his treasured possession. Now, I'm sure you're like most people. There are things that are very near and dear to you. Uh, things that you own, things that, uh, that, that belong to you. Maybe it was something that was handed down to you from your parents or from your grandparents. Something that you see as a keepsake. That's what we call them. A treasured possession something that's held in high regard, that's what Moses is telling the Israelites, that they are to God. That they are a people who are chosen by him to be his treasured possession. They belong to him. And they're keepsakes for the Lord. People that are set apart for the Lord. And then if you keep reading again where I was a moment ago, verse 7, uh, Moses says, look, he didn't, he didn't choose you because you were the most people. He chose you because you were the least. Uh, and it's not anything that you did, but God chose you. That's what he's telling them. And he did this because he loves them. That's verse 8. Because the love of the Lord, because God's keeping his oath that he made with those that came before them. And so Moses is reminding them of who they are and of who God is. And he's reminding them that God indeed loves them. That God is faithful to what he says. God's the one that brought them out of the land of Egypt, out of slavery. Freed them from the hand of Pharaoh. And that's exactly what he tells them. And so we make our way down to verse 9. And I love what he says here in verse 9. Know therefore that the Lord your God is God. I'm reminded of a very short verse, but a verse that has great meaning. Where the Lord says, be still and know that I am God. We need to make sure that we remember that the Lord our God is God. But Moses doesn't finish off there. He goes on and he says, This God who is God is the faithful God. He is faithful to his word. God makes promises throughout scripture and God keeps his word. He is true to his oath. As he swore to their forefathers, God is continuing to be faithful to his word. And so... The Lord your God is God. And he's faithful. And notice this. He is faithful and he keeps covenant. He keeps his steadfast love with those who love him, who keep his commandments. And so what's Moses doing with this, this passage as he's writing this to the children of Israel? He's telling them, listen, here's who you are. You are people that are set apart for God. You are people that are holy to him. You are people that were chosen by God. And not only that, you're chosen to be his treasured possession. And remember that God's faithful. Remember that God's the one who delivered you from the house of slavery, from the hand of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. He brought you out into this place where now you're waiting to go in and possess the promised land that God is giving you. And so these are very important passages. And he gets to this point in verse 9 where he tells them God keeps his covenant. He keeps his steadfast love with those who love him and those who keep his commandments. And so Moses is saying, listen, guys, remember to follow what God has said. Through the rest of Deuteronomy, Moses is going to essentially retell the law. He's going to remind them of the things that God has given to them as guidelines for the way that they are to live. And Moses wants them to remember that they must keep the commandments of God. And when they do, God, they can know for certain, is faithful. And he will grant to them those precious promises that were made so long ago. God will allow them to be able to take possession of the promised land. Now, if you go into the New Testament, it's 1 Peter chapter 2, where Peter there is talking about how we today are a chosen people, that, that we are God's people. It's verse 9 that says, you are a chosen race. You are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people, and notice this, for his own possession. 
it, it's, it's very similar to the words that Moses is sharing back in Deuteronomy 7. These words of Peter are very similar in nature. And particularly, we think in terms of God's people, and certainly the Israelites, the Old Testament. But today, those who are faithful to the will of God and obedient uh, and, and those that are baptized into Jesus Christ, they are the people of God. And so Peter says, look, you're a chosen race. You're a royal priesthood. You're a holy nation. You're a people for God's own possession. And so Peter is reminding us in this New Testament passage, he's reminding us of who we are. And then notice this. It's the rest of verse 9 where he says that we are his own possession, a possession or God's possession, so that we may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You are a people who are chosen by God. You are holy. You are set apart for God. And you are his own possession so that you can go out and you can proclaim the mighty wonders of God so that you can tell other people how great our God is. And then verse 10, once you were not a people, but now you're God's people. Once you'd not received mercy, but now you've received mercy. That's all of us. We were once strayed from God. We walked down our own path, but God, but God has granted to us His grace and His mercy, and we are a chosen race. We're a royal priesthood. We're a holy nation. We're a people for God's own possession. Let's make sure that we go out each day and proclaim His excellencies. Let's go out and proclaim His mighty works. Let's go out and tell people what God has done for us in Jesus.